I'm doing this presentation on behalf of CORAL, a Clinical and Operational Research Alliance that is a research platform gathering um, people from the ALIMA NGO and scientists from INSERM, the French National Institute for Health and Medical Research in Bordeaux and Abidjan. And we developed together uh, innovative research studies aimed at improving maternal and child health in humanitarian settings. And I'm presenting today the results of uh, the ongoing 1,000 days cohort studies in Miria, Niger. And it's going to be on maternal factors associated <laughs> with, maternal, with perinatal mortality. Um, Perinatal mortality is defined as late fetal mortality plus early infant mortality occurring during the first week of life in low resource settings with high prevalence of home births. It is often difficult to differentiate late fetal and early neonatal deaths. So we believe it's a useful indicator to assess the quality of obstetric and early neonatal care. Um, perinatal mortality in Niger is among the highest in the world. Data is scarce, especially in rural areas. We found a recent publication showing a 10% rate of stillbirths in Zander, Niger, so in the same region where we implemented our cohort. Um, in this context, prevalence and associated factors of perinatal mortality are important to assess. And the idea is to be able to identify maternal risk factors that may help with prioritization in birth planning, meaning deciding whether the mother should deliver at a health center or at a hospital for the most complicated cases. So here on the map, you can see where we worked. So it's in the Miria district, Zander region. Um, the 1,000 days health services were implemented in three of the 17 health zones of this district. And uh, services were provided in 16 health structures covering a population of 125,000 and with 6,700 births expected every year in the area. So the objectives of the talk today were first to evaluate perinatal mortality and associated maternal risk factors in rural Niger, and second, to assess the proportion of pregnant women presenting with danger signs identified during antenatal care in relation with both perinatal mortality and place of delivery. So here on the slide, you can see the full package provided within the 1,000 days healthcare services. And it's, being, it's provided to both pregnant and lactating women and then to newborns until they, they reach the age of two years. So uh, it includes, for instance, Im immunization, prevention of, and, uh, and treatment of malaria. And it's important to emphasize that all mothers were receiving nutritional support during their, their pregnancy. And same for the kids who received a daily ration of Nutributor from 6 to 24 months of age. So we are in a context, as you know, where most pregnancies occur at home. So one of the ideas of this package was to convince women to uh, deliver the baby more often within the health structure. So uh, you can see on the graph that uh, coverage survey were conducted prior to the implementation of the 1,000 days um, package of services. And 25, only 25% 25 of women delivered within a health structure. And the same type of survey was conducted one year af after the implementation of the 1,000 days package services. And as you can see, in, in the non-1,000 day zone, the proportion of women delivering uh, in health structures did not change. It was still about 25%. But this proportion increased in the 1,000 days catchment area 
uh, to about 40%. So um, is it good enough? And is it a good indicator to look at? So I'm going to come back to this later. So concerning the presentation today, the cohort uh, was implemented in five health facilities in rural Niger. And at these facilities, we included all pregnant women presenting for first ANC visit between April 2015 and June 2016. And then mother infant pairs were followed until 24 months postpartum. Concerning the statistical analysis, we run a multivariate generalized linear mixed model to examine factors associated with perinatal mortality, including study site as a random effect. And then we created a complication score based on six danger sites identified during any of the ANC visits. So it includes uh, women of younger or uh, older age, first pregnancy, multiple gestation, severe anemia, positive malaria testing, or preeclampsia pre defined as high blood pressure with proteinuria. And we assessed this complication score in relation to perinatal mortality and place of delivery. So you can see on the flow diagram that we included 1,745 women in the study. Of these women, uh, we had 50 uh, pr unknown pregnancy outcomes, 12 abortions, and four maternal deaths occurring during pregnancy. So ultimately, 1,679 1, women gave birth, and of these, we observed 68 stillbirths, 4%, and 16 neonatal deaths, 1%, resulting in a total of perinatal deaths of 5%, which is elevated. Concerning baseline maternal characteristic, uh, they were aged in median 25 years. The median parity was high, 3, ranging from 0 to 14. Uh, one third of women uh, had nutrition deficiency uh, with a MUAC below um, 230 millimeters. And concerning the number of ANC visits, you can see that 15% of women only did one. About half of women did between two and three ANC visits. And 37% uh, of women did four ANC visits. It's important to note that gestational age at first antenatal visit could not be reliably estimated due in particular to late presentation. So on this slide, you show the final model with a multivariable analysis on factors associated with perinatal mortality. Nothing surprising here, but I think it's always important to emphasize. So you can see that um, women having done less than four ANC visits, uh, among women having done less than four ANC visits, the perinatal mortality was 1.7 higher. It was two times higher for women with a prima primiparity. Um, women who had uh, an, a, a malaria positive RDT during pregnancy, the mortality was 2.5 higher and it was three times higher among women diagnosed with severe anemia during pregnancy. So then we looked at danger signs that I defined earlier, and you can see that as many as 30% of women experience at least one danger sign, 20% at one danger sign, 10% at two danger signs, and only 1% had three danger signs, and no women experienced more than three danger signs during pregnancy. So then we looked at danger signs in relation with perinatal mortality, and you can see that women with, among women with no danger signs, this mortality was 3.5%, while it was 8.5% among women with more than one danger sign. And interestingly, um, the perinatal mortality was not higher when women experience more than, when they experience two danger signs. Um, 
the, we had not enough statistical power to conclude on whether uh, the mortality was higher with three danger signs. And finally, we looked at danger signs in relation with place of delivery, and it was disappointing for us because, as you can see, um, among women with no danger sign, 37% delivered in a health facility, and exactly the same proportion of women experiencing at least one danger sign uh, delivered in a health facility. So as a conclusion, perinatal mortality is a useful comprehensive indicator in environments where a large proportion of births occur outside of health structures, and we believe it should be more widely reported. Um, so here we had a prospective cohort with minimal dropout, and it shows high perinatal mortality rate, 50 per 1,000 births. Um, we have to be cautious when we try to benchmark this figure with other, and because it really depends on the context and on the methodology. Um, perinatal mortality was associated with maternal risk factors that are easy to identify during ANC. Um, so we observed that a higher proportion of women were delivering in health structures with 1,000 day services. But unfortunately, pregnant women with risk factors were not more represented. So health workers should now make a better use of data collected of, uh, during ANC so that the most complicated cases can deliver in health facilities. Before I close, I would like to acknowledge my co-authors listed on the slide, as well as the Coral Board, board of Directors who decides on the strategy, on our, on our research strategy. Of course, all the women and children who participated in the study and the study funders. Thank you for your attention.